Itami, thank you for joining me on another episode of TFL Talking Trucks. You got it, Andre. And today we have a great opportunity to go in depth with the new Ford Expedition. Yes, Ford Expedition has been around for decades, maybe almost close to three decades. And for 2025, we've got a new one. Now, Andre, is this an all new Expedition? Is this a facelift? What are we working with? Well, I wasn't sure when I went to Detroit to actually see it, uh, but I spoke with the chief engineer, Adrian, who uh, was, you know, integral to the development of the new expedition. And, uh, well, well, we'll have to play that interview at the end of this podcast. Okay, yeah, sounds good. So we're going to get the inside scoop from the Ford Insider. But first, Andre, let's just talk a little bit about what Ford did with the expedition. Some high-level changes, some pricing change, which is crazy, and then a little bit about the alarming state of the full-size SUV industry. Yeah, because we have sales numbers from the third quarter of 2024. Um, if you guys are listening or watching this podcast, you could always go to otfl.com. Uh, we recently published, um, Case and I did a sales report on pickup trucks. So you could see the state of the full size and mid size and compact pickup trucks. Um, you could all see there's some good news and bad news. <laughs> we can review that on this podcast uh, um, a little bit. But the SUVs, remember you and I did a podcast about a month ago. And I called it the 2025 will be the year of the big SUV. Mm -hmm. Well, we're not quite there yet. Not quite, <laughs> no. But um, uh, we've got some exciting new changes on this expedition. Now, first of all, Andre, it seems like the big news on the expedition is bigger. It just looks like everything <laughs> on this vehicle is upsized. The headlights, the screen, the tires. So is it true? Like, is it just a bigger vehicle overall? Well, that's what I asked um, Adrian. And overall, the size of the uh, the whole vehicle didn't change much. So the wheelbase is about the same. Uh, you know, the height of the vehicle and kind of the length of the vehicle is almost the same. And it has to do with a couple of things. So first of all, the, we're talking about truck-based SUVs here. So they have frames. Mm -hmm. And also, they're meant for hauling families, huge amounts of people, right? Up to about eight people. Um, in most cases. And so if you have a large family, if you have a lot of friends with you, uh, these are the SUVs we're talking about, but they have to be garageable. Yes. That's what I've been learning about these. So if you talk about Chevy Tahoe, uh, which is the leader in sales um, in big SUVs, uh, people still like to keep them nice. Yeah, you know? right. <laughs> They're spending a lot of money. We'll talk about pricing soon. Um, but they want to keep them nice and they want to garage them. So if you extended it further, made it taller or longer, it may not fit in the garage anymore. Uh, that's, that's an interesting thing because if we're at a point now where the structures that we keep these behemoths <laughs> in are the limiting factor. <laughs> or but, garages. To, yeah. I mean like public garages, right? Which is a pretty funny situation that the vehicles have gotten so big even for American-sized roads and parking spots. Yeah. Now, Andre, Expedition um, – Still EcoBoost power, or can you get the V8? What's what are the engine options? No, so they switched to EcoBoost power. What almost eight years ago, maybe mm -hmm. more, um, and they still EcoBoost. So all, no, all. The, the Coyote hasn't returned. For no, <laughs> no, th that's been a little bit of a bummer. So a lot of you, because um, we've been watching the chatter about this vehicle, and it just made its debut at the State Fair of Texas. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, you and I are not at the State Fair of Texas. <laughs> we wanted to be, but because um, I love being there. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, but um, hey, podcast listeners and TFL Talk viewers, I wanted to take a minute to talk to you about a quick and simple way to sell your car or truck with the help of our new partner, High Road. With High Road's online portal, you enter your vehicle's VIN number or plate, mileage, and zip code, and you'll get competing offers from several qualified dealers in your area within seconds. You pick the best deal offered and follow through with the dealer to sell your vehicle. No more managing scammy emails from buyers on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. No more time wasted on no-show buyers. No bait and switch with a, will you take a check excuse from sketchy buyers. Now keep in mind, these offers will be for trade-in values of your vehicle. If you want to go through the hassle of getting more for your vehicle, that's up to you. But if you want to sell your vehicle hassle-free and fast, go to tfltruck.com and click Sell Your Truck in the navigation menu. Or click on the High Road ad at the bottom of the website if you're on mobile, or click on the column if you're on a desktop. High Road makes it easy, and we like easy. I lost my train of thought. 
No V8. No V8. Yeah. Oh, uh, people want a big 7.3 V8 in it. Yeah. Well, Do you think they should put it in there? <laughs> no, that's <a> crazy. <laughs> I mean, it's almost to the point um, where this vehicle has gotten so big, and I do think that there could be a market for an even larger expedition. Like it would be like really, an excursion. yeah, it would be really cool to see an HD based version called yes. the excursion. And I think even it would be really hard with like corporate average fuel economy numbers. But I really think people would buy the heck out of an updated excursion. Bigger is always better, at least, in, unless you have to park it. Yeah. Um, but there's a big demand for these big SUVs, and I think that Ford would do really well coming up with an even crazier expedition. I've heard this before from a lot of our viewers, too, and listeners, that bring back the excursion. Yeah. Because you know what? Like, the death of the excursion was really, well, the economy was one part. And but Fuel prices. It, but fuel prices yeah. and also... Um, just if, um, emissions, right? Mm -hmm. That's what kind of killed the excursion. But we have new technologies now. But also, there is no hybrid. You know, I, I kind of expected the new expedition to be a hybrid, and it's not. Well, we do have some interesting competition now in the full-size segment. So we have just seen the launch of the new Nissan Armada. Yes. Which has gone twin-turbo V6. Yep. We saw the launch. You're actually going to drive it next week of the updated Tahoe Suburban. Yes. Right? No twin turbo v6 so they're still old school v8s yep the new infinity qx80 right um updated um uh, gm trucks across the line also probably on the way likely so i mean it's it's an interesting time to be in the segment the alarming thing is though andre based on the sales numbers things aren't looking so hot no and i think we're in this transition period right now right where you just mentioned almost every manufacturer is coming actually there's a trend for turbocharging, even though GM is not doing it uh, as much. There's a trend for off-road ready SUVs as well, like Armada Pro 4X. Uh, but right now we're in this transition period where the sales are down, dude. So if you look at tfltruck.com, I just uh, recently published this story. Um, and uh, third quarter numbers, like I said, came in. Tahoe went down 15.4% wow. year to year. Um, it's still leading. It's still leading the uh, sales chart. The Yukon went down 8.6 percent. Expedition went down 13 percent. Suburban went down 25 percent. Escalade went down 17 percent. Jeep Wagoneer, whoa, up three percent. Up three percent. Okay, and then Sequoia up 3.4. So yeah. people are still buying in this class, but maybe that it could be that the folks that weren't buying Suburbans and Expeditions were waiting for the new generation. Yes. So maybe that's why some of those numbers are, are down because some of the newer vehicles on the market, like the Sequoia and the Wagoneer, actually saw a little uptick, right? Although Lexus LX is way down as well. This is interesting. Um, no, but let's talk about some other of the big changes on the Expedition. Um, so I think the coolest thing, Andre, that they changed on this vehicle is they went from the Timberline to the Tremor, right? To this. Yeah, the Tremor. So, and you know what? Uh, I was confused a couple of years ago when they introduced the Explorer... Timberline, and then they introduced the Expedition Timberline, and then they had the FX4 F-150s, mm -hmm. they had the Tremor F-150s, and it seemed like there was like brand confusion. Right. right? We, what am I buying? Is it the Timberline? Is it the FX4? Is it the Tremor? And now it seems like for this kind of, you know, centralizing it all, yeah. and they're using this Tremor brand, which I think is a great idea because it kind of brings truckiness, mm -hmm. you know, the F-150 Tremor character, and it puts it directly into this SUV. I do think that the Timberline tr trims did kind of muddy the waters from a branding standpoint. I think that it was the right call to get rid of that. And I'm sure, fingers crossed, we're going to see that across all of the Ford SUVs as well, right? Yeah, so there is a rumor, uh, Ford hasn't confirmed this yet, that the Explore Tremor is coming. Yes, that so, would make sense. Yeah, there, there's a rumor about that. But look at the trucks. They have a Maverick Tremor. Yep. Ranger Tremor uh, used to be here and not quite here yet with a okay. new generation. Uh, F-150 Tremor and Super Duty Tremor. Mm. So that's a good lineup. You know, it's really nice and even and easy to understand. Now, in this Tremor, are those light bars in the grill? Yes. So... <laughs> So you know how Toyota started doing that, yeah, right? Like the in the Tundra and the yeah. Sequoia, uh, they started doing additional off-road lights, and it looks like Ford is doing something similar. So if you're looking, um, if you're watching us um, on YouTube at TFL Talk channel, um, these um, inside the grill, uh, there's additional off-road lights, and they only come on with brights. Mm. So you can enable it, 
But you know what happened? What happened? Uh, Ford switched. They removed a headlamp switch. Okay. It's now a digital button inside the screen. Oh, I hate that. You know my Chevy yeah, Colorado? Yeah, why are they doing I mean, it's a cost thing, probably. Probably. But why are they doing that? That's... I, I don't know. Well, it's probably a cost thing, but now you have to go into like a menu, find the light section. Uh-huh. But you know who else does that is like Tesla. Mm. You know, our Cybertruck almost has no buttons or switches, you know, hard switches, right? Um, it's all digital. So I don't know if manufacturers like General Motors and Ford are kind of moving that direction as well. And it appears that, like they're doing that now. I, um, I really think that I'm hoping that we enter an era going forward where we go back to the physical buttons and knobs. Because what we're doing is we're making these vehicles less convenient for the end user. And I know that it may seem like the flashy, fancy thing to do, but it just ultimately makes the consumer worse off by going to especially essential controls like wipers, like lights. When you put them in a screen and you, you, you can't just feel for them tactically, I think it's a really big miss on their point. So I really hope that in generations going forward, manufacturers start to undo some of those decisions. I highly doubt it because we're finding that screens are actually a lot cheaper than developing hard physical buttons. Yeah. And now we're seeing the opposite where like the <laughs> everything has digital gauges now and only the very tippy top high end million dollar cars are going back to analog gauges. Yeah, like the hypercars. It's yeah, kind of yeah, like yeah. watches, how like a cheap watch has a screen and a really expensive watch is mechanical. Yes. It's it's we're seeing this interesting inverse. Now Andre, let's uh, talk about that interior. Yeah, um, hold, hold on. Bef I, I want to finish that topic just really sure. quickly. Sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, because technology is a big thing, of mm -hmm. course. And before we look at the interior, which is kind of controversial on the new expedition, um, I wanted to uh, point to this, that apps controlling your vehicles are now huge. Sure. Just And I think one of the best companies at this is Tesla. Um, Tesla allows you to monitor your vehicle, to control a lot of its features, right? You can control the climate inside the cabin remotely. What if you could turn on your lights remotely? What if you could actually speak to your vehicle and say, Expedition, please turn your headlights on. Yeah, I don't think I want that. <laughs> don't think no? that's something I need. No, like I never wanted to talk to my car. <laughs> no. Remember in the 80s when like, the Nissan Z. You would have the talking door chimes. Yeah, yeah, it would say, your door is open, yeah. Mr. Micah. Not, not uh, for no, me. No, no, that's okay. Ooh, Andre, this one's got some blingy wheels. 24s. 24s? That's another trend. Golly. The new Suburban will have 24s. 24s. Uh, the new Expedition will roll on 24s. Some expensive tires. Uh, this is another trend which I think is getting a little out of hand. We actually have a whole topic on this over at TFL Car Podcast. Um, the problem is, is when you put these huge wheels on, the, the first initial <laughs> suspension in any vehicle as you hit a bump is the tire. Is the rubber, yes. And as a suspension engineer in the old days, you could let the tire do a lot of the work and you could have a compliant suspension, but that was, you know, easy to engineer over a lot of surfaces. But now with these teeny tiny sidewalls, we're, we're forcing the suspension to do so much work in order to work, and it's uh, yeah, it's just not, I think not a not not a great thing long term again. So Andre's looking up some pictures because uh, we don't have any queued up, but the interior here, he's over at Car and Driver. Um, uh, we'll have the full video over at TFL Truck. You can watch it, but it is like screens and tablets galore, huh, Andre? Yeah, and they redesigned the interior, and, and that's the huge change, right? Um, it's not like they just replaced a, one screen mm. in the interior. Um, and I was talking to the designers at Ford and the engineers at Ford. And um, this, um, so I don't have a production image right now. This is kind of a spy image. And this may not be the most, um, I actually like it. Like this image doesn't make the interior look that attractive, but actually sitting in the vehicle, uh, they put uh, the main gauge cluster, which is now 24 inch diagonal. <laughs> so it's pretty large, but it's really uh, not very tall. So it kind of keeps, you know how in, in Lincoln's now they have screens that go yeah, the pillar to pillar? The pillar to pillar screen. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is like half the dashboard is a screen, mm. not pillar to pillar. But you keep your gaze, you know, high because you're looking at the road and you don't have to change your gaze very much. You just look down just a little bit and you see your speed, your settings, your navigation. You know, you can see a lot of information very easily. 
And is that in front of the driver or is it more offset in the middle of the car? No, it's mostly in front of the driver. Okay, that's and good. They, and they also got rid of the heads up display. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of vehicles have been switching to heads up displays, which project information onto the uh, windshield. They're going away from that, huh? But this expedition went away from that because the screen is where the heads up display would have been. <laughs> It's so <laughs> big, they're like, you you can't see anything out the windshield if we make the screen any, any, bigger. any bigger. Yes. Um, and they redesign it, and I, f- I think it feels nice. Like, uh, the weird part is the steering wheel. Hmm. The steering wheel shrunk, and it's a little bit like a rounded square. Like it's not squirkle. complete. Squirkle. It's not a huh. perfect circle. And I was kind of asking some of the designers about it, and they said, number one, they wanted the top of the steering wheel a little bit lower. So you could see that screen, mm. right? Um, and also, they didn't say this, but I'm afraid we were being prepared for when the steering wheel will go away completely. <laughs> Our, you know, well, because it's it's been shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. It's gonna like, be a joystick before we. It's, know it's it. gonna be it's gonna be a joystick soon, or maybe it'll disappear in ten years. So where is the gear shift in this? New expedition. It's now a dial on the center console there. Mm. But, uh, but people it used don't to, love dials. No, though. I don't love dials. Yeah, people don't love dials. And I also it was, but it used to be a dial before too. Was it in the old one? It no, wasn't. So the shifter? explorer, the explorer had a dial. Okay. And still has a dial. And I believe the expeditions went to a dial. Remember the Lincolns had piano keys. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And that's also not my favorite. I don't like keys, you know, push buttons for the transmission. I mean, the advantage of having a small shifter is you clear up a lot of space in the center console for storage and cup holders and that kind of thing. But you can also accomplish that with like a column shift, which a lot of companies are going to Like now. GM is. Yeah, going right. There. Yeah. So I, I kind of almost prefer that a little bit to the dial because it's just, once again, more tactile. The less you have to look down and think about it. But the dials have been around for a lot of years, and I think people are going to get used to them. Yeah, and um, so overall, I would say... Um, if you're looking at the pictures of the New Expedition interior, and you know it's easy to make a, an opinion, right? But I would say hold a lot of your opinions until you sit in it. So I I, I kind of liked actually being in in it and sitting in it versus just looking at pictures of it. So what about the hard numbers like the towing capacity and the payload? Have those changed very much? Um, they creeped up a bit, okay, which is good. That's good. Yeah, which is that's good. Great. Because really, a big SUV is truck based, right? So it has a frame, and they increased the f- um, towing capacity for the new expedition to nine thousand six hundred pounds. Mm. So it used oh. to be it used to be ninety three hundred pounds for some of their top, you know, towing trims. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now they bumped it up three hundred pounds, uh, which is not much, and it's almost class leading. Uh, the only SUV better than that is the um, Wagoneer. Mm. Uh, you can get a Jeep Wagoneer at 10,000 pounds. Okay. But they're all playing within the same kind of parameter there. But like GM is not super worried about it because their Tahoe's are still at 8,400 pounds. Yeah. So, and I like GM typically, at least even on their truck side and their like HD stuff, they kind of play a slightly lower number. Their argument being in the real world, people aren't towing as much as the max tow will have you say, right? Yeah, yeah. But um, no, that's good, Andre. So a little bit of additional capacity, but quite a bit of additional price. Yeah, we need to discuss this because (laughs) maybe that's why some of the sales are down, right? Because even though seemingly, you know, people have unlimited, I don't know, financing or budgets, you know, some of the people who are buying these, uh, but... It's turning me off. So you know, the prices are going so high. I, I've got the price difference from the 2024, the current one, to the 2025. And this is base price? Is this it? is base, base, base. And I see the difference here of an additional $6,070 to get into a basic expedition. We're now looking at a starting price of nearly $62,000. Yeah, uh, before destination charges. Before destination. Yes. So Holy 617, moly. Yeah. So 61,700 for a 2025 expedition is before destination. Destination is likely to be 1995, oh, which man. is already a really high. Two grand. That's the current destination. So, so we're talking a starting price of 63 grand plus plus after destination. And this is is this like a two-wheel drive? That's a two-wheel drive and they're calling the new base trim active. Active. You know, before they had Excel, XLT. Before they had poverty, but now it's active. It's active <laughs> SUV because it's an active lifestyle, Tommy. 
No, like this is crazy. So we're, we're looking at an entry level vehicle in this class for 63. So like the days of an affordable big family hauler, right? Are not here anymore. Which is kind of what the expedition was always good at, are getting less and less attainable. I mean, and like this is not a navigator, right? This is not a tremor starting. So do you, do you think we're going to see a $90,000 expedition? I think it's very likely. Uh, and the reason why I say this is because 24s, mm -hmm. um, the platinum version of the expedition, and we don't have a configurator yet, so we can't really configure these now. Um, all the all the tech that they added to it, um, you know, now there's massaging seats and cooled seats and, and the heated seats, of course, and the heated steering wheel and um, the new steering wheel itself. Mm. <laughs> um, uh, and by the way, the center console, you know how on the Tahoe you could slide, like there's like a little button, yeah, yeah, could and then an entire console slides back. Now the Expedition has that too. Wow. So, Fancy. So, so a lot of cool stuff, Andre. I'm excited about it, but that's such an expensive asking price. 63 starting. So as, and unless you have realistically 70 plus for a pretty decently equipped one, um, look, we don't really know what like the new Armada is going to start at, right? That's probably going to be pretty expensive. Have they announced pricing on that guy yet? I think I'm just looking at that now. By the way, the Armada, the new one, you actually saw it. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be driving it in a couple of months mm -hmm. or a few weeks. Um, it also went to three and a half liter twin turbo. Yeah. <laughs> so it's almost like it's not EcoBoost, of course. It's a Nissan technology, right? But uh, they almost went there as well. You know what? I don't have pricing no, here. They, they didn't tell me pricing when I was there. Oh, wait. Oh, the outgoing Armada started at 58. Oh. So it could be close to 60. Maybe I'm being dramatic then because apparently all of these are... I haven't <laughs> clearly studied up on the prices of these full No, no, but, but you're not <laughs> off base, Tommy. <laughs> increasing the base price by 6,000 bucks, you're increasing it by over 10%. Yeah. So you're not off base. I mean, this is a huge increase mm. um, in price. Um, and the final, the first question you asked me on this podcast is, is it all new? Right. So should we let Adrian explain? Yeah, let's cut to the engineer, have them kind of explain what they did, and then uh, we'll close this bad boy up. Adrian, uh, nice to see you. Hey, Andre, good to see you as well. All right, so we're standing right next to um, your baby, right? So this yeah. is a world debut of the, uh, I was going to say refreshed 2025 Ford Expedition, but you guys were saying it's all new. Yeah, completely. So I wanted to learn more about it, right? Because, uh, you know, we like to do deep dives, you mm -hmm. know, on our podcast and learn a lot about new vehicles. And this is a big one, not just because of size, but it's also very important, right? Yeah, for sure. So tell me a little bit about you. How long you've been at Ford and how long have you guys been working on this expedition? Yeah, so I've been uh, with Ford just around 20 years. I was telling you, I mean, uh, uh, Bronco Sport was just before this. So okay. off-roading and vehicles really in, in the veins. And uh, we've been at this for a, a few years at this point. And I think maybe as we talked about earlier, right, the expedition journey started off with a lot of like deep diving into what the customers wanted. So probably one of the things that stands out immediately is what we've done to the rear of the vehicle. So do you want to talk about that for a second? Yeah, and I also um, want to talk about the chassis first. Okay, whatever um, you need. So yeah. as, as we're here in the back, tell me about it. Is this just kind of like a, a little few style updates yeah. or is there more underneath? There's quite a bit going on underneath. Okay. So, in, as we did the 2025, the ride quality, the capability of the truck was really important. We wanted to take that to the next level. So, all the suspension in the frame has been redesigned. It's new, okay. right? To deliver a combination of great road manners, right? Significantly improved ride and quietness, along with a lot of capability. So, one of the things that we've unlocked is the ability to tow without uh, load leveling bars up to 7,000 pounds. And as far as we've known, that's the best that's been done in the segment. Yeah, so a lot of people may not know this, right? Oh, yeah. Sometimes when you hear that big number, let's say 9,600 pounds. Which is our top, yeah. Uh, which is your top rating on this 2025 expedition. Um, there's more to it, right? Because yeah. uh, what sometimes you have to read in your owner's manual, um, I call it weight distribution hitch, yeah. right? Or lo load, load bars, like you're saying. Yeah. Um, sometimes those ratings are quite low, like 5,000 pounds, yes. right? So you've been able to lift it up to seven. Yes. Um, of course, you can still tow that 9,600 as yes, well. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But it's a big deal, that, right? So 
It drives changes and reinforcements all the way from the connection point in the hitch through the frame to manage those loads in a safe and capable manner. And what it does to us is it enables anyone to get to their trailer and just hook up and go. So you can imagine, you can use your backup using the uh, Pro Trailer Hitch Assist, yeah. lower it, and off you go. When in the past, there was another half an hour of meddling around with a uh, load leveling bar. Yeah, and so, I mean, I, I have a 6,000 pound boat. I have a yeah. 22 foot right. ski boat. Mm -hmm. And uh, boat trailers are unique because there's, you kind of have yeah. a long tongue, you know, mm -hmm. sticking out from the boat. So some of those don't even have weight distribution attachments, right? You, like, so, yeah. yeah. We were thinking of you almost. Yeah, that's, oh, that thanks. was yeah. <laughs> But that's exactly the case. Yeah. Uh, a lot of our customers do that, right? Boats, uh, tra I mean, trailers like the one we'll see in a second yeah. with ATVs, right? So it's, yeah. I wanted to talk to you about this a little bit before we talk about style and some other stuff. Yeah. Um, the expedition in my mind was always kind of the F-150 SUV, right? Mm -hmm. So it had a lot of in common as far as maybe the chassis, maybe the powertrain. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the rear suspension is quite different, right, yeah. between them. Are they separating a little bit now, or would you say it's still a lot of similarity there? So I think there's a lot of similarity in the right places. Okay. So the great thing, right, is we've got F-150, best-selling truck, and it's built for tough and we take all of that capability, it's part of the platform, and we bring that across, right? So three and a half is fully proven, you've got that 10 speed, some elements in how we do that the frame are there and the suspensions, but then we add the uniqueness, right? So for example, I mean, that rear suspension that's independent, and we have to make sure that it truly delivers on being the flagship SUV. So, so that's comfort, capability, all that stuff. Yeah. All right, let's walk around this way. Um, did you change the wheelbase at all? I mean, from the well, previous wheelbases one? Wheelbases are the same. Okay. Really, dimensionally, uh, we're at a really good sweet spot. So we went back and said, okay, um, would we change overall dimensions of the vehicle? Well, a key concern for our customers is, can you garage the trucks or not? Yeah. So both short wheel and long wheel base owners uh -huh. are normally like line to line, right? Yeah. So they were like, Yes, we want more space. No, okay. do not make it any bigger. <laughs> so you can stretch it bumper to bumper, but you could play on the inside something, yeah, right? Yeah, we did play on the inside. Okay. So something that is really interesting is we were able to give this 25 Expedition behind the third row 13% more space. Okay. And it's really usable space. Most of the stuff that you carry around is in some form of a box, right? Luggage. Uh, your go to cost, whatever coolers, it is. Coolers, stuff, everything, yeah, okay. right? So we've taken that point to where you can, uh, sh to the shop face, rearward, and because we have a tailgate, it's straight, right? Uh -huh. So that makes it so that the biggest object can be placed at any point across the vehicle. Yeah, this is a big deal too. So right now, let's look at the uh, rear hatch. And um, mm. so it's a split gate now, right? Split gate, yeah. Uh, very traditional SUVs just have one hatch that opens, right? Yeah. Uh, but some fancy ones in the past have had the split gate design where you have a little tailgate and I'm going to sit on it now. Um, this is like 600 pounds of capacity, right? Yeah. So I'm a pretty big dude. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what I like about this is um, uh, several things and also like, I, my son plays soccer, right? Yeah. I can kind of back up towards the field and I can watch the game and I'm a little bit protected from the sun, you know, the hatch is above me and I'm sitting. Um, and you also have in the other vehicle, a little seat back here that opens up. Yeah, you can use, we have got cargo management system that does three things, right? It can be a table, it can be a shelf, or it can be a backrest. Yeah. So I, I mean, I just really love seeing you, Andre, like sit back here and live out our vision of what of how to use this truck. Yeah, and people, well, I own pickup trucks. I mean, we're used to tailgates, right? Yeah. Um, so this is a quite neat feature. Yeah, it's this ability, right, of having a vehicle that has elements of what is best about a pickup, but it's still able to carry seven or eight passengers at any point in time. So part of that, you know, we haven't really, you know, I haven't talked about this too much, but you know this long center aisle? Yes. So the ability to carry long objects and still have six adults in comfort was something that we were like, what was an aha moment? Like, of course, right? You want to go to the sea ski slope yeah. or maybe to the hardware store. Sure. Right? And you're going to come back with some long object 
but you don't want to lose two and a half, I mean, a space and a half. So. Yeah. So you can still have, so the, the third row is now 40, 40, 20. Yeah. So you have that pass through um, in the middle. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's really important. I mean, so you're kind of adding a, a few capabilities as well. Yeah. Um, and then getting back to the chassis just a little bit more, uh, we spoke about, you know, relationship to F-150. Yeah. Um, and you said you redesigned the frame a little bit and the suspension to handle a little bit more weight, right? Yeah. Lifting that, uh, carrying. Um, tell me a little bit more about I guess the suspension options, right? Because you have several grades available. Um, can you get different suspension options like adaptive ride or, or whatnot? Yeah, so there's, I would say, there's probably three main tiers that we could talk about. Okay. There's the base suspension. Then we have a continuously controlled dampening, uh, damper okay. option, right? That's deployed primarily on the 24 inch uh, wheel version. So that plastic ultimate. And the third is what we're going to talk about in a second regarding uh, tr uh, the tremor. Tremor, right? yeah. So the tremor is one. its own thing. Okay. okay. Well, let's move forward and talk a little bit about interior design since the door is open. Yeah. But I also want to ask you about powertrain, right? Yeah. Did you change that at all? Yes, we did. Okay. So we took a no compromise approach to the powertrain. So as I think everyone knows, if not, we'll explain here, year after year, emission standards get tougher and tougher. Okay. And one way of meeting them is like you do the changes you require and then you penalize max, maximum torque or uh, power output. Okay. What we've done is we've stayed with our proven three and a half liter engine and we made all the upgrades required so that it still delivers 400 horsepower, which is now actually 20 horsepower more standard than we used to have. We used okay. to have 380 option than 400. Uh, okay. Now 400 is the base. Okay. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a big deal. It's and the torque now. is still there, 480. 40 is still right? there. It starts there. We'll talk about the high output version a little bit later. Okay, yeah. Um, okay. And the, what the truck we're looking at here is the King Ranch edition, so you can kind of see some of the badging and the unique style, right, yeah. of this truck. Um, you change the interior a lot, and we can also talk about it as we're moving forward towards the Tremor. So now it starts with um, Expedition Active, right? That's yes. kind of the base level. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of being renamed. Some of the grades are changing a little bit, and it's similar to the Explorer. Absolutely. I was just with the Explorer a couple months ago. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of similar naming conventions there. We are bringing across those naming conventions. So you start off with Active, and you've got two levels of Active, and then you move on to Platinum. And within Platinum, you can get your Entry Platinum or Platinum Ultimate. Okay. And there is an appearance package for Stealth, right? So you can get that. And separately, you can see a King Ranch that we've talked about yeah, today. Yeah, this one, yeah. Or Tremor. So we really think about it in terms of four series with some, some packages in between, okay? Well, let's take a wide view of this Tremor. So before you had a Timberline, right? So you had yeah. an Expedition Timberline yeah. edition. So that's um, kind of evolved into this, right? It has. Yeah. So when we did the Timberline, right, it was kind of... Uh, touching the waters of where, where you wanted to go. Going all the way to Tremor was a really important step because Tremor has like a name for itself. Um, Tremor, well, it's been in pickup truck world for you yes. for several years. For yes. several years. Yes. It's a great success. Yes. So it's one of those where like it created belief and it created the changes, the push to make the engineering changes required to meet what it needs to be a Tremor. So, I mean, we talked about starting off from the tires, right? We went yeah. all the way out, 33 inch tires on this truck. General grabbers. General grabbers. So this is very similar to the F-150, right? It is yeah. the same tire we okay. use over there. So okay. why mess with success? It's a okay. great tire. Sounds good. Yeah. I noticed the wheel design is um, you're pointing with a color accent where the uh, stem, valve stem is, which is kind of a unique SUV thing. Yeah. So it's really inspired in actual off-road use. So racers have done this for a while, right? They, they were in a situation where they're deflating and inflating. They wanted to quickly know where it was they had to connect. So off-road enthusiasts have gone, and we've now followed suit here, marking up the window where the valve is. So I, you know, I remember just, just now when yeah. the Maverick Tremor came out, Yeah. very similar thing as well. Yeah. So that's the style kind of across, there is, um, F-150 Tremor, of course, Super Duty Tremor is yeah. there st still. So that's a pretty nice touch. And then, of course, you have a unique front end. The grill is a little bit different here as well. Yeah, grill is unique. We've got those off-road 
specific lights on the grill. The phage is unique as well to improve the approach angle, right, significantly from the base vehicle. Um, and those off-road lights, uh, like everyone going off-road is drilling and putting on their own custom lights. Yeah. So we've gone ahead and just integrated them into the, into the grill and also integrated them into the controls and the HMI in the vehicle. So you can activate them from your lighting menu as long as you're in an off-road condition. So it's integrated yeah, kind integrated. of into, the, uh, into yeah. the whole system. So it's not like an accessory you add on yeah. later, right? No, uh, no risk of leaks or anything else happening on your brand new truck. Um, so the dashboard is wildly different from what it was before. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you have a t huge 24 inch screen on top. You've got a large screen in the center. The steering wheel shape changed too. True. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite interesting. Yeah. So it's a, it's a whole package, right? So it starts off from an observation. We all know that digital is here to stay, right? And we all know that digital, if executed incorrectly, can be distracting, right? So we wanted to make sure that we were like integrating the digital world into the real world. So maybe a, a way of thinking of us is like an infinity pool, okay? So you've got I see. the real world yeah. and the digital world merging into one, which is why we went with all the information right. And the high, really high in the visibility high field. In the visibility. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, and that, I mean, that then cascades into all the other decisions, right? So the steering wheel, the steering wheel com, comes along, right? Make sure you've got, you can always see all your information. So the shape of the steering wheel, uh, that's what you're talking yeah, about, right? Yeah, shape of the steering wheel. Yeah. yeah. It's going to chime, I think, because the, um, yeah. the headlamps are on. Exactly. That's quite interesting. And of course, how the stereo is kind of on top there as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we, yeah, so the whole setup, right? So you've got all your information, we see like um, in line of sight to the real world, right? Overlaying to that real world. And then we've got the stand bar, uh, available 22 speakers, right? In the right location. So really amazing surround sound in this truck. Uh, and it's interesting because the big screen, the 24 inch, I just noticed, I mean, some vehicles have heads up displays, mm -hmm. but almost you don't need this in this. No. Right? Because that information is still really up high yeah. in front of you. And you know what I really like? That because it's a screen and it's in the right place, you can have all the information you need, right? So you, Not just some. Not just some, not okay. just speed and the next turn. You've got your speed and you can, you're can. going to project your map there. So you're going to be able to see your map where you're going in full detail, right? With minimal eye movement. I gotcha. And then here's kind of the rear of the truck. Uh, oh, I guess we could open the tailgate here and kind of show that. Yeah, let's show um, that here. Show the action here. Yeah. Zach, do you want to go on the other side? By the way, I love this. Um, this tremor is shown in this kind of, do you, do you remember the, color, the name of this color? Wild green. Wild green. I was going to yeah. say avocado. No, <laughs> no, not quite avocado, but. <laughs> not quite avocado. <laughs> but I love, you know, the orange or yellowish accents, you know, for, for the tremor, it's kind of very, very, um, you kind of know it's a, it's a tremor just by the color of the trim. So I want to point something out yeah. that just happened here. So as you open it, we've got these lights that turned on, right? So they, this is one of those that they serve multiple purposes. Initially inspired by the fact that we were going to have a tailgate and you were going to be hanging out back here. If you were in, at nighttime, you want to yeah. have something. But then they're incredibly useful. Like if you're doing a supermarket run, right? You're yeah. able to approach with your car, make sure nothing is left behind, mm -hmm. illuminating the area behind you. So, do you know where I, f I saw them first? I yes. think Bronco Sport. Yeah, there must be some relationship there. Someone must. Have. Is there? Yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I'm talking to the guy who, who developed yeah. the Bronco Sport and now the Expedition. The uh, it is. It is a very useful uh, feature. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um, and can I close them both at once, right? Yeah. I, can, I can push here, right? Yeah, you can. So let me see. So if I push the button on the upper hatch. Does it look like a ballet dance. There you go. Aha, so the, the tailgate closes and then the hatch closes yeah. in, the, in this way. And it's uh, standard power. So if something is, I mean, a key frustration and fear of pretty much any SUV owner has been I have something in the back and it's gonna roll out. So like you can always see I, someone. Oh, like going like yeah, this? Yeah, like they're, 
Okay. Is something going to fall out? Yeah. And um, this kind of eliminates that. We jokingly call it the ultimate apple catcher. Okay. <laughs> Well, this case for helmets, right? So you'd be, yeah. you can pack your, st your stuff here. It's also really helpful as you're putting th stuff in. You, you know where your edge is and you can uh, get your things in the right place. And uh, yeah. And when you're loading heavy things, right, you have no lean over. So you, you're putting something right here and then you can push it in. Yeah, right? let me, let's. So normally you've got like, you have to see, it, you, you forget when you your hair, but normally if you have something really heavy, yeah. you've got almost a foot of lean over just to get it across the seal plane. Sure. Here's nothing, right? Like you can grab maybe a, a sack of sand and just lay it here and jimmy it over, push it on, uh -huh. not hurt your back. So or a heavy cooler or something. Heavy cooler, anything you can slide on. So yeah, we're really happy a, with the... Uh, it's a neat feature. Yeah. Um, you have some outlets here, so 400 watts. Um, yeah. Did you guys think about I always ask this. Um, I was just at the Maverick 2025 uh, event, and I, I was asking, you know, why not more like two kilowatt oh. outlets, stuff like that. Did you guys consider? Is this um, currently the only thing available right now? Yeah, this is what we're offering right now. And with 400 watts here in the back, yeah, for the experience of like having a call it buffet with a crock pot, or maybe you're setting up your TV for a, a tailgating or something got plenty there so that was the approach we took right now but we'll put that in my uh feature ideas um book. there's another idea um, yeah. i had for you yeah uh hybrid yeah because uh f-150 hybrid is a pretty cool powertrain yeah and we talked sure. about the relationship between the expedition and um the f-150 and so um if you know somebody can you tell them that andre said um expedition hybrid i think i should send a text <laughs> but the good thing is right we've talked about getting to uh, hybrid by the end of the decade. So, yeah, we'll just see. Just a little bit away. A little bit yes. away. Okay. Well, um, so it looks like, I mean, we, we started this um, by saying, you know, is it updated or is it all new? And you t told me that you redesigned the suspension points. Mm -hmm. You know, the frame is different. The interior is quite a bit different, including mm -hmm. the, you know, the tailgate here. Uh, so I can see, I mean, you, you're, t you know, touching almost every element of this truck. Yeah. We've tried to be very purposeful, right, based on like everything we learned from the customers, uh, where we were really focusing as we did the all new and making sure that like we also didn't break what was working. Sometimes that happens, right? Like you've seen products like, like why did they take this away? It was so great. Uh -huh. Like so for example, just one example of that was, you know, we have uh, we on Expedition, uh, we've had the easy access to the third row which is a tilt and slide, mm -hmm. which enables you to have a car seat on that second row position. Do you want, do we want to show yeah, that? We can get from over yeah, here. Let, let's, let's, um, let's climb over. Sorry, it's not yeah, very I'm graceful. I'll show you how this, how this works. So tilt and slide, right? Push a button and you tilt and slide the seat forward. So you've got easy access to the rear. And the important thing here is we don't have a baby seat or a child booster yeah. seat, but that fits up here, right? So in many of the competitor vehicles, when you, because they're uh, more of a, Fold, like a fold and yeah. tumble. Yes. Like, what, that, are you, what are you going to do? Right. You're you not going to remove be, that uh, child yeah. seat. Yeah. This is like one of those. If it's not broken, don't fix it. And actually, it's more than not broken. It works great. I just noticed you have some um, kind ambient of lights. like ambient lighting inside. Yeah. It's red in this case. Yeah. So it's red on this side. You'll see on the other side of the vehicle, it's red on the open door. Uh huh. And, on and the it's front blue door, on the closed. Blue. Yeah. yeah. What's going on there? So you you pick your ambient light color. In this case, whoever was here last picked blue. Okay. But when you open the door, it turns red to indicate the door is open. Uh, like both for someone that's passing over, and or if um, somebody's driving by, so they can so they can see it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get you there. Yeah, makes sense. And then um, if you stay here, let me walk around because I want to show the center console. Sure. Um, as well. Yeah, this is one I'm really happy about. So let me jump in. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so the center console slides. It does slide. Yeah. And in this case, there's kind of a lock box here. Yeah, like we have safe. an accessory yeah. for safe. Uh, however, you know, it's... Um, it's like added protection if you need it. This sliding console, when it's when you 
turn off the vehicle, it stays locked. So if you're leaving a purse or a computer, whatever valuable you have, you can leave it inside there. Um, some customers still want to add a level, so that's an accessory available from the factory. Gotcha. Um, quite comfortable, you have cup holders. I noticed a couple of interesting things. Um, yeah. Well, you had the dial shifter for, for, for some time in mm -hmm. some, of, some of your SUVs, but you have the Pro Trailer backup knob, not on the dash, but it's actually in this little cubby yeah. um, inside. So that kind of surprised me when I first saw that, but it kind of makes sense. So if you reach for it, it's right where you... Yeah, yeah. My, 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 my arm is laying down on the console and it's, yeah. and it's easy yeah. to reach. Yes. That's the idea. Yeah. Um, also, the drive mode and the um, four-wheel drive switch is on the left. Let me show that. That was another small surprise. I didn't expect it. It was a little surprising to see it there, but I guess it kind of makes sense. Yeah. We've got the... Um, so it's a key physical uh, control we want to make sure you had access to. Right. And the brake controller. And brake the brake controller. brake controller is right here on my right. And yeah, right where I you expect it that. to be. Well, a lot of hit people are right-handed. I don't want to, you know, talk you know, talk down to left-handed people, but like I am right-handed, so I appreciate that, right? Um, and some, for some um, big SUVs, uh, trailer brake controller is um, an option, yeah. or maybe it's not even there. Yeah. So it's really important to have it. Very important. Yeah, part of our uh, heavy heavy-duty trailer tow pack. It's standard on many of the series. Well, very cool. I, I, I think, I mean, did we touch on most of the uh, most of the changes? I think we have. I think the, um, maybe the one thing I'd like to talk about as we wrap up our conversation sure. is it's, um, it's an overall package, right? So we were really going for, in the 2025, making sure that we were going to deliver that capability, make sure it was the most capable expedition we've done before, making sure it was versatile, right? It's ready for anything, right? So this is one car wonder. Mm -hmm. And then it was incredibly advanced from a technological point of view. It was really taking it to that next level. You saw that with the interior and this uh, almost uh, morphing ability the truck has, right? And if, well, we can't overlook the fact that we did Tremor, which is like a highlight for me, the fact that we've done this. Yeah. Uh, um Raptor, Expedition Raptor. No, maybe too much. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, I'll, let's go down to my, my book. <laughs> Andre suggestions for the future. White body, you know, flying over. Well, I don't know if many customers are asking about flying over jumps. Are they? Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, I think people will be amazed about what you can do here. So I can't wait to see it offered. Are, well, I can't wait to drive it. I uh, really appreciate your time. Anytime, Andrew. All right. We'll, Thank you. We'll talk to you later. I'll see you around. So, Tommy, uh, I was quite surprised when Adrian explained to me that even though the wheelbase is the same and the overall size of this new expedition is about the same, that they changed the chassis. They changed the frame. Mm. And the big part of it was, as he just you know told you, is um, actually the suspension components and how they attach because they wanted it to be a little bit more stable. Uh, more comfortable, and also towing more. So this is not just like a minor, let's change the headlights and put new screens in it. Yeah. There's actually some structural differences between the 2025 and the 2024. Yeah, and that, uh, it was surprising. And so, because a lot of manufacturers like saying that, we have an old new vehicle, you know, it's completely redesigned and it's amazing. But that's why we go to these events, right? We want to try to, you know, understand what is it exactly. And uh, the fact that he said, you know, you cannot interchange suspension between the previous one and the new one, um, even though they're all independent now, right? right? All independent um, suspension corners. Um, it's something. And of course, we haven't driven it yet, so we can't just say, oh, it's better it's now. It's better, yeah. But but it, it is quite... Um, I'm, I am also a little bit... Um, you know, I asked Adrian, as you just heard, um, I told him, you know, where's the hybrid? Mm -hmm. And we... <laughs> I also asked him about the Raptor expedition. Nice, Andre. That would be cool. Uh, he, of course, could not comment on future products. Yeah, of course. As, as nobody as can. As they always say. Yeah. As they always say. <laughs> but I think there's a limit. I don't, I don't think... Do you see a world where you have like a $100,000 Raptor expedition? I mean, 
Are we actually heading there? Well, I didn't think we'd see a world where you have a hundred thousand dollar HD truck, <laughs> and that came pretty quickly. So I, I honestly, I do think we're heading there, right? I don't think there's there might be one car sold in the U.S. under twenty thousand dollars, but everything has gotten expensive, and it seems like, you know, I don't know where folks are getting this money, but. People apparently are buying these eighty, ninety thousand dollar SUVs. So uh, there very well could be a world where we see a Raptor Expedition for hundred k, which admittedly would be very cool. I think that'd be pretty, pretty rad. Yeah, and of course, Tommy, my straight up most favorite feature is that they added the split tailgate. That's very cool to the Expedition. I like that a lot. Um, you could sit down on it. It holds six hundred pounds. Nice. So two big dudes can sit on the tailgate. Uh, or several people, several smaller people could sit on the tailgate nice. of this new expedition. Sweet. And you could be protected by the upper hatch from rain or sun. Love split tailgates. Very Range Rover. Yeah, that's really yes. cool. It's really awesome. Or also Land Cruisers used to do this, right? 100%. Yeah, yeah. no, that's a great feature. Well, Andre, I think if um, folks want to learn more about this new expedition and get the real fine details, where can they go? OTFL.com, because we have walk-arounds, we have, like you just saw, interviews, mm -hmm. um, and also other SUVs too, not just expeditions. Yeah, and you can see those full sales numbers at TFLTrek.com, which Andre was talking about earlier, if you want to see how the market is looking right now. But um, if you've got comments, be sure to leave them below. And as always, this has been Tommy. And Andre. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.